It's the most ancient tradition of the hunt here on Montana's Milk River as host Mike Hanbeck comes to full draw on trophy whitetails. None of it's going to be easy. All of it's going to be exciting. It's a rut in November on the Milk River. Oh, there's another big one coming right here. Something's gonna happen. It will be archery hunting at its best here in the Whitetail Revolution. Winchester Whitetail Revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend, Otis Technologies, the most advanced gun care system in the world, Code Blue, perfecting the science of hunting, Winchester Rifles and Shotguns, the guns that work. There's an undeniable purity to hunting whitetail with a bow on the ground. Mike is hunting with Cottonwood Whitetails Outfitters in northeastern Montana, smack dab in the middle of the rut. But can he take one from the ground? It's a rut in November on the Milk River. Can't think of a better time to be here. My annual pilgrimage up here, been going about five years, my sixth year coming. No place like it for bow hunting in North America in my opinion. When I met Elliot and Luke Stroman five or six years ago, we decided to put a couple of hunts together. Oh, nice shot, Mike. Didn't have a lot of expectations. I knew they were good guys, great traditional bow hunters and all that. I had a lot of fun doing it. He's killed some good Pope and Young bucks up here. And, and this year, we know we've been talking. He's going to be hunting up here in the rut. And we just decided, you know, he's going to hold out for a real good mature buck. Not necessarily big, but we'd like it to be big, just like anybody else, you know, but uh, definitely mature. One really great thing about Cottonwood Whitetails and the Stroman place and where we're hunting there is it's bow only all season. And that kind of makes it special because you're up close and personal hunting these deer without having any rifle pressure on the place at all at any point in the season. When I got here, I just couldn't believe. Pure whitetail gold is what I found on the Milk River. Sometimes during the day we do a little nudges or whatever to sort of double your opportunities there. And when you're on the ground, you need all your help you can get. Before I could get in and get my ground blind set up, normally I'd have deer coming in, rutting by. That's the biggest one right there coming at us. I don't know, there's another big one up there. It might be bigger than the dark one. Yeah. Man, alive. Look at all the bugs. Probably six bucks. Oh, okay. oh really? Oh, wow. Well, that's but a lot big, better than I saw. But so. the big buck went that way. That right was okay. That all was right. a big one. All right. Another one was probably a shooter in that about four or smaller bucks. Yeah, this bucks. is just tore up in here. You get to see it all the way by. Um, good thing about that is it didn't take long. No, that was great, man. I'm going to go do another one. 
A natural deadfall can be a great elevated stand, first assuming the tree's in good shape. What do you think, Mike? If we break a few places. All right. Love to do it. It's also an absolute match for the surroundings and one that the deer have always been used to. But even with a natural stand, it's important to clear branches to open shooting lanes. You know, we shot some great animals, Pope and Young, uh, 125s, 130s. And I said, you know, this year, guys, I'm going to try to hold out for a 140. And that's not easy for me to do, because when a Pope and Young comes by, usually I got an arrow flying in the air. But I wanted to kind of raise my standards a little bit. Well, we got about an hour left of shooting lane. We'll go see what we can do with it. All right. Dang, I'm back. You still got it. Still got it. That works. Boy, it's kind of nice. I can see it from a mile away with this thing. <laughs> yeah, Tough bow hunting in orange. Yeah, it is. It feels I think awkward, it's doesn't it? Psychological. Purely psychological. Mm -hmm. It's got to be. We think deer can see it, but they can't. You know. Yeah. What you think? Yeah. So we decided we're going to do a ground game up here, and it is tough. There is nothing like bow hunting whitetails on the ground for pure in-your-face action and all that. Magnify that when you start doing it during the rut, because you've got opportunities for bucks cruising around, chasing does, maybe fighting, a lot of rut behavior going on, bucks coming by grunting. He is rutted. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. What about this giant yeah. down here? Yeah. There's one right on the fence line, too. There, there he goes, goes across. You can just see his body size. Yeah. Make it up. They're so used to traffic here, a guy really can get away with this. It's kind of nice. Oh, it's unbelievable. A lot of people would look at what we're doing right now and say, this has got to be a high fence, some sort of sanctuary, yeah. whatever. This is Milk River, some of the best bow hunting in the world. It's my first trip out here during the rut because usually I come yeah, early. Yeah. And it's just phenomenal, as you can see, all the bucks that we've seen today chases all the big bucks got a, a doe and they're right with them you know it's bow only and it's done right and you manage it right and you it's just it's awesome it makes it for fun doesn't it and i'm gonna kill one tomorrow i hope so. that works all right let's go let's go get some supper Let's get to this week's Whitetail Insider, your source for the latest in the ever-changing world of whitetail hunting. There's an old saying, get your kids out hunting and you'll never be hunting for your kids. Here's Mike Hanback and how quality time in the outdoors with family builds passions, bonds, and memories that last through generations. This is one of my favorite blog posts ever on the Big Buck Zone. Virginia hunter Kenny Myers and his son Kendall have been hunting together since Kendall was four years old. One day last fall, they shared their first deer kill together. Spike walked 40 yards from the ground blind. Kenny smoked it clean with his muzzleloader. Six-year-old Kendall sat there in his Hot Wheels chair with his toy crossbow. The boy watched it all, mesmerized. They field dressed the deer and dragged it home. Kendall was happy and thought Dad had just shot the new world record. The boy took the antlers and pictures of school and shared them with his kindergarten class. Kudos to his teacher for allowing something like that in this day and age. The story also shows that the size of the buck doesn't matter. It's a hunting experience with family and friends that really counts. For the Big Buck Zone, I'm Mike Handback. You know, this is just another great example of what you see on my Big Buck Zone blog. Just good, down-to-earth, hardcore deer hunting. Taking a mature whitetail buck on the ground may be the ultimate challenge in bow hunting. But that's what host Mike Hanbeck set out to do. This hunt uh, during the rut on the milk, right mid-November, always what I wanted to do, incredible. You know, our original game plan was let's shoot a good mature animal and a big buck. But you know, as a bow hunter, when you shot a lot of deer, and it makes you feel good to, to pass those bucks, because when you're passing that buck up, you still get to hunt for the mature one. Shoot through there, Jimmy Branch, really. Yeah, they do. They set up on our reservoir. Crap shooter. 
This is something you don't see every day. People are out looking for rubs. These are what I call violent rubs. I've written about that a lot. And look at the, all these bucks. We saw four or five mature bucks in here today, but look at how they have just torn the hell out of all this, this deadfall. Little one, branches, big sticks, big, they've tackled it all. And I know Lop here is one of them because he's a really aggressive buck. I mean, he's unbelievable, he's really aggressive, and he's broken up some. And you know he's doing a lot of this, but a lot of bucks are hitting this right here, unreal. Peak of the rut right now, unbelievable. When you hunt the rut, it can be the, the greatest excitement and the greatest disappointment all in the same held breath. You can see 20 bucks in a sit. You can see one buck in a sit. You only need one. right there had me screwed. He'd have dropped down the river. We've been, been good. Oh man. Well, let's sneak up here and see what's going on. Here we go. I couldn't shoot him. So if you come up here and try to shoot a three and a half, four and a half year old animal, that's sort of topping on the cake. On the ground, tough to do. We've tried everything, and they're in such hard rut, like you say, we're just gonna try to still hunt up on one. Yeah, maybe call Shoot one with a bow and arrow, maybe do a little call and see what happens. You were saying those deer out in this field running around? They're running at the edge like crazy. So if we can get to that drain and pop up and yeah. see. Set up over there and maybe we'll get one coming out. <clears throat> In the last couple of years, we've been doing this ground game for, for Whitetail Revolution, and I tell you what, it's tough. God damn. We got too much brush. A lot of fun, huh? Yeah, it was, actually. <laughs> Thanks, it wasn't a monster buck. Fun for me to watch. Yeah, yeah, because now let's see I it. wasn't shooting right. <laughs> Well, let's go see if we can hit one. On our portion of the milk where we hunt, terrain is everything. They have everything they need. They have uh, very thick habitat um, that they feed, feed out into alfalfa fields. Everything they need year round from, from spring till fall through winter. So we have about six miles of the milk and it's just so conducive to bow hunting and that really helps us out. If you can sneak in, it's one of my favorite tactics, especially as the rut starts to go. Downwind of a bedding area with good hidden access, back in tight to where those big bucks are gonna be coming from the feed fields, it's a great technique, exactly what happened on our hunt. He's looking for that dog. Might be more coming, he's looking down there. I don't know what's going on. Oh, he must see something. How cool is that? There's nothing like these rotten bugs. That was a beautiful deer. You know, another two years, he's going to be a great shooter. He's framed up real good, but just an immature deer, so we passed him up. But, just a little blind bleat, and here he came. Circled us down, we got in about 20 yards. We passed him in the rut like that, calling him in on the ground bow hunt. There's nothing like it, really not. Wow. Eight yards seemed to be my range for this encounters on this hunt. And one was old bridge buck. Two or three bucks come in, a couple of does, but the big shooters in the front. And 
he comes in and he's coming right to my side of this big cottonwood, so boy, I draw. Winchester Whitetail Revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend, Otis Technologies, the most advanced gun care system in the world, Code Blue, perfecting the science of hunting, Winchester Rifles and Shotguns, the guns that work. Is baiting with corn the same as hunting a food plot? Let's see if hosts Spomer and Weishan have opinions on the matter. I hear arguments from fellows particularly in Texas where deer baiting has been accepted for just about forever and, and it's a tradition down there. And yes, they do have thick, thick cover in Texas and I will not say that I know everything there is to know about Texas deer hunting, but when these guys say, hey, there's absolutely no way you would even see a buck if you wouldn't bait, I just can't buy into that. I have a different opinion apparently with Rod and a lot of things, even though we're old deer friends and hunt together. but. You know, there's so many different things that need to come into play in these situations. There are areas where hunting, the, like in parts of South Texas, the brush is so thick that if you did not use a bait area or something like that to draw those animals out to you where you could see what they were, you might never take an animal. And the animals will overpopulate and, I mean, things are going to go wrong. I've been down there hunting and yes, it's thick, yes, it's difficult, but there are ways to get those bucks in the open. I've rattled them, I've grunted them. I've still hunted them. I just think you need to get out there, get your feet on the ground, learn to read, sign, give it the old college try, folks. You know, give it an effort. It's, it's just too easy to walk out, park your butt in a blind, poke the barrel out of the window over a pile of corn and shoot your deer. I, you know, I can understand the attraction because you're pretty sure that that big buck is going to show up. What the heck is that, Ron? It's a food plot. You know what? It's a food plot. It's okay to have food plot, but you're saying I can't take corn or take those and put them in a combination to farm a ration that's really good for deer and feed them in Texas or some of these other states? Hey, you make the call, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm cheating myself if I just plunk my butt down over a pile of corn and shoot a deer. The only difference is, is you've got it in the field over here. I've got it in the trough over here. They feed 24 hours a day out of the trough over here. They feed, 20, feed 24 hours a day out of the field over here. There's no difference. Look, folks, just because Larry and his buddies do it in Texas doesn't mean the rest of us have to do it. Spomer, just quit whining and go hunting. It puts meat in the freezer, but it doesn't necessarily make me a satisfied hunter. Log on to Versus.com to tell us where you stand on the debate. The simplest things are not always the easiest, like hunting a mature buck on the ground with a bow and arrow. Stop them. There's big bucks in here everywhere. God. Just like the rest of this trip, I'm on the wrong side of the tree, but he was definitely the shooter, the first buck, and nothing but five hours left. Let's go get this, see what happens. If you spend enough time on the ground among a group of rutting whitetails, you will be able to recognize some of them on sight. This aggressive old battler, named Lop Ear, is recognizable after one glimpse. He's an aggressive buck. He's got a broken ear, a broken brow tine on one side, and his eyes been kind of gored. And I said, man, I, I wish that deer would come in. He's an old deer. He's a dominant deer. I'd love to get a shot at that deer. And I look over, and I mean, here he comes. I mean, he's got fire in his eyes. And I'm trying to draw my bow. I can't draw him. And this buck comes in eight yards dead on. And you can't take that shot in bow hunting. You can't do it. You got to wait till that deer is either broadside or quartering away. Finally, his doe kind of bust off a little bit, following the doe in. Tried to stop him, you know, and he got out there about 37 or 38. What can you say? Part of bow hunting is missing. If you've not missed animals, you know, there's a lot of people not telling you the truth. I call them liars or whatever. You know, I miss my share of bucks, and every bow hunter does. That was a lop-eared buck. He was right in here at 10 yards, and I couldn't get
couldn't get drawn on him. I couldn't stop him until he was about 35. And I'm not ashamed to admit it, I could have made the shot, should have made the shot. It's just a lot of fun. Mike and I get along so well. And uh, he just gets along with everybody in camp. And <laughs> we, we have fun when we're together. And I hope it shows. You know, and I don't need to come up here and experience a kill to have a great time. I was here to get an opportunity on the ground at a mature buck like that. And it happened, and I didn't close the deal. And there's only one good thing about that. I can come back and see old Luke and Elliot next year and go for it again during the rut. And that's part of the whitetail revolution.